I thought today we would look at Chaldeans and wolves used as demonic things in scripture. We also should be aware that anything to do with Bashan or bulls of Bashan most likely will be speaking of evil things such as demons. Paul was speaking at Antioch and said this statement and woke up many people in the crowd with this provocative statement. Acts 13.40 Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets comes upon you. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. Now the Jews know the Bible pretty well. They know their scripture. So they recognize this was talking from Habakkuk. And they also recognize that he was talking about raising up a nation of Chaldeans. The problem was the Chaldeans had been dead, utterly destroyed for several centuries when he said this. Today we uh, talk about demons, but no one believes in them. Uh, this is a mistake. We need to understand that uh, Jesus spent a lot of his time casting out demons. We need to understand that they're out there to get us today. Paul had quoted Habakkuk, and, didn't un and they didn't understand what he was saying to them. Habakkuk 1.5 Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it were told to you. That's pretty much an exact quote of what he said. For indeed I am raising up Chaldeans, a bitter and hasty nation which marches through the breadth of the earth to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. And we need to emphasize to possess dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. In other words, they're stuck on themselves. They don't look at any, anything else. Their horses are also swifter than leopards and more fierce than evening wolves. We underline the evening wolves here too. Uh, their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as an eagle that hastens to eat. They all come for violence. That is their purpose. It's just violence. They don't care about anything. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. They scoff at kings and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold for they heap up earthen mounds and then seize it. Then his mind changes and he transgresses. He commits offense ascribing this power to his God. Chaldeans were an Old Testament type of demons. They died out as a nation in 539 B.C. So just imagine what the people were thinking when Paul quoted this verse in Acts. If we took the time to read Jeremiah 50 and 51, we see that they were utterly destroyed, as in not one was left. So someone listening to Paul speak in this time of Acts, would have, what would they have been thinking about what he said? Just like Paul would have been scoffed at in, in Acts because the Chaldeans were dead for centuries, Today, people scoff at us for preaching about demons. For some reason, demons died out when Jesus rose from the tomb, never to be mentioned again. Many denominations won't speak of demons, even though Jesus spent a major part of his ministry casting them out. If there were no demons anymore, why preach the armor of God in Ephesians? These demons being raised are looking up for dwelling places that aren't theirs. We have joined the army of God and are put here to fight this spiritual war using the tools God gave us in Scripture. Chaldeans were thieves. Remember, they seek dwelling places that don't belong to them. This should expel the thinking that a blood-bought believer filled with the Holy Spirit can have a demon inside. That's exactly who they're searching for. Your armor is the Word of God, faith, righteousness, peace, truth, salvation, and praying in the Spirit. The non-believer already is filled with demons talking to him and he doesn't know or doesn't want anything to change since they were children. The believer is the one they're looking for that doesn't have his armor on or weapons shined up and ready to fight. Jesus comes in by the door or by the gate. You're going to find that demons look for any opening such as a window to enter into a believer. Whenever we read about windows in the Bible, look for a demon to come in that window. When we read about windows, that is an opening for a demon. Usually it refers to the eyes. What you see can make you a believer of a lie. Seeing is believing. We have faith in what can't be seen. Psalm 83.2 For behold, your enemies make a tumult, 
and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. So he is saying the demons are crafty and they're plotting against Israel every day. We are spiritual Israel. Psalm 83, 12. Who says, let's take for ourselves the pasture of, pastures of God for a possession. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says, we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field or pasture. You are God's building. So he's coming after us. He says, let's take for ourselves the pasture of God. So people of God are his pasture. We keep thinking they are coming after the unbelievers, but they are aimed at believers, so the unbelievers surely won't escape. Demons want you. They seek your destruction. Do not underestimate them. The exhaustive dictionary of Bible names says Chaldeans, as it were, demons. So it just tells you straight out that Chaldeans in the Bible are demons. Even though they were a real people, at a real time, but they were utterly destroyed. Uh, the root word is to lay waste or to destroy, and they're also called wanderers, because they will wander through the wilderness, looking for who, who they can take with them. Matthew 12, 43. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. When you become saved, you're swept and put in order. But you will be empty until you fill yourself with the bread of life, which is the Word of God. So if you don't, if you don't read the Word of God every day, you will be hungry and empty. And the demon will have an easy time taking over you. It says, then he goes and takes with him seven other uh, spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. He is saying it's, it's a more uh, backsliding than we even realize. Daniel 1.1 1, 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with some of the articles of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar. Shinar is actually Babylon. Uh, that's where Cain went to start his town. To the house of his God, and he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel, and some of the king's descendants, and some of the nobles. Uh, verse 4. Young men, in whom there was no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had the ability to serve in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. So he, most people don't realize that Nebuchadnezzar was a Chaldean, and he came to take areas that wasn't his own, and one of them was uh, Babylon. Now if you look at what they're stealing here, they're stealing stuff out of the temple, and they're stealing the, the children of Israel. And he wants the best and brightest of the, of the children of Israel, and he wants to train them in the ways of the devil. And that's what we're doing in our schools, our public schools today, are teach, teaching trash to our young people, so that when they grow up, they'll be thugs and, and uh, uh, miserable people, like we see attacking in, in Portland, Oregon. You can't even speak to them. They don't have their right mind anymore. Daniel 1, verse 5. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of the time they might serve before the king. So he's giving three years to convert them from Judaism into Babylonian uh, habits. Also, he's using wine and delicacies. In other words, uh, the Hebrews were to live simply, but he is giving them the finer things in life in order to draw them away from their heritage. Verse 6. Now from among those of the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, 
To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and Hananiah Shadrach, to Mishael Mashiach, and to Azariah Abednego. So he's even changing their names to Babylonian names. Nebuchadnezzar was a Chaldean who took Babylon and made himself a king. He stole a place that wasn't his. Then he stole Jerusalem and took its best and brightest. Then he stole the tithe of the temple. When we get to heaven, our works will be thrown in a fire, and there will be wood, hay, and stubble, and also gold, silver, and gemstones. Gold represents good works. Silver equals righteousness. So I believe that our fruit here on earth equals the tithe we pay to God in his temple in heaven. I once had a vision of Isaiah 6 and 1 where uh, I went into the throne room of God and he was high and lifted up. But I had to reach into my pocket to pull out pocket change and throw before him instead of the treasures of heaven. We need some, the tithe of heaven to pay him what he deserves. And, we, and he wants good works and righteousness to, to throw before him. That's where our crowns come from. We are to lay up treasures in heaven. What are they for? What if we are short? Today the devil wants the next generation and to steal from God what is his. Let's go back to Habakkuk 1 verse 7. They are terrible and dreadful. Their judgment and their dignity proceed from themselves. Their horses also are swifter than leopards and more fierce than evening wolves. Their chargers charge ahead. Their cavalry comes from afar. They fly as an eagle that hastens to eat. So he's mentioning evening wolves here. They all come for violence. Their faces are set like the east wind. They gather captives like sand. And they scoff at kings and princes are scorned by them. They deride every stronghold for they heap up earthen mounds and seize it. Habakkuk 1.11 Then his mind changes and he transgresses. He commits offense ascribing his power to his God. So they just work helter-skelter. They'll do one thing one day and another thing the other day just to hurt people. It, they don't have any prescription. They just want to hurt you and steal from you. Here the prophet is saying that they are all are like wolves circling around their prey, watching them and looking for any weakness they see. Don't ever believe that demons aren't watching your weaknesses preparing to attack you at your weakest spot. They notice when you are tempted by a woman passing by, and they will arrange for you to see porn, or have a woman come to you and tempt you. They notice your thoughts as you contemplate cheating on your income tax, and they will place easy money in front of you to get you to steal. They know you looked at someone drinking alcohol and would have, will put a drink in front of you and make it for free even. Uh, I've seen people that have fought alcoholism for decades and they'll meet an old friend and they'll go out and buy him a drink. Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-seven, 27 Her princes in her midst are like wolves tearing at prey to shed blood, to destroy people, and to get that dishonest gain. Many times in scripture princes have demonic overtone. Uh, the only time I've ever seen princes used in a positive way was the prince of princes. Now the prince of the air is the devil, of course. But most of the time, princes in the Bible are going to be uh, demonic beings. Zephaniah 3.3 3, Her princes in her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone until morning. Evening wolves mean they attack at night. When do you see most demons doing their work? Notice they won't even leave a bone until morning. Don't make the mistake thinking a demon will not finish you off if he is able. He never has a good day and never gives mercy, ever. If demons come into a woman, they can make her get an abortion and kill her own child. Acts 20 verse 29 For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. So Paul is saying here, and, and uh, savage wolves will come in where he just left, not sparing the flock. These are going to be church members. Acts 20 verse 30, Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. 
Know this, wolves and sheep cannot coexist. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If you don't hear his voice and follow what he says, are you not just as a wolf and say and what he would do? Could you not have a demon in you? Don't you know that wolves attack in packs? If there is one wolf, more are coming. If Satan had his way, he would thrust every newborn baby through with a sword, just as he did for Moses and Jesus in their day. Demons are vicious and never give you a break. Verse 30 says that they will draw away the disciples after themselves. That means they're in church and they're coming after you. Demons are vicious, but they're also cunning. Daniel 2 verse 2. Then the king gave the command to call the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to tell the king about his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Demons are always trying to distract, deceive, and determine your future. We're going to find that magicians, astrologers, astrologers, and sorcerers are also abominations to God. They came from uh, the Nephilim. They are the ones that were soothsayers and astrologers and sorcerers. And they taught it to the women and they became witches. Habakkuk 1 verse 14. Why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things that have no ruler over them? They take up all of them with a hook. They catch them in their net and they gather them in their dragnet. Therefore they rejoice and are glad. Verse 16, therefore they sacrifice to their net and burn incense to their dragnet because by them their share is sumptuous and their food is plentiful. Shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity? This is a drawing, a picture of us being just fish to be caught in a net and they drag net and catch us just like nothing is there. And then they uh, empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity. There are a lot of nations that have fallen, their governments have fallen, because the people allowed them to take over. Who is they in these scriptures? Demons are plentiful and attack in packs. They can even take make nations fall if their bait is taken by the majority. Why do you think they're always asking about polls? God says uh, that our thoughts are not his thoughts. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we want to take a poll all the time to see if we agree with the carnal man. It shouldn't matter because we know what God wants and we should follow God no matter what the poll says. But if 60% of the people want to kill babies in the womb, then we kill babies in the womb. Because we want to go with the flow and, and do what uh, Satan has put before us. They are cunning and studying you to put bait out just like they did for David when they got Bathsheba to take a bath on the roof just as ba uh, David was coming out of on his balcony. They knew what his weakness would be. There's no telling how long that they watched David and he knew he had an eye for women so they put a beautiful woman taking a bath on the roof just as he came out to look at the sunset. It's easier for a righteous man to fall than for a sinner to become a righteous man. So when you, have, when you think you're a righteous man, you're more apt to fall than to take a non-believer and make a righteous man out of him. That's a lot harder. Ephesians 6.11 says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles in Greek is methodia, and that means to lie in wait, or schemes and plots. An attack of the devil is not at random, but has been planned out and aimed personally at you because he has been watching your weaknesses. We must remember they are watching us always, even when we are alone. When you think no one is looking, that's where our character is clearly seen. This is why when someone is caught in a crime, many of the people that know him personally will say, I can't believe it, or I never had a clue. Well, Satan knows he's been watching you and planning his move to take you. The Bible lists seven categories of demons. Thrones, lordships, rulers, authorities, principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, 
evil and unclean spirits. You notice most of these have to do with governments because the government of God is what the government of the kingdom is going to be. All the man-made governments out there generally follow satanic rules. They, and if they try to start off godly, they will be tempted into changing because that's just the way men are. Joel 2 verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong, uh, the like of whom has never been seen, nor will there ever be such after them, even for many successive generations. So he's talking about the last days, and notice everything is dark in the land. There's always darkness and gloominess when they're talking about the last days. He's talking about a nation is rising up that is gloomy and dark, and not, there won't be any nation like this ever again. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. So here he's describing the Garden of Eden is before him, and after he passes over it, it looks like the wilderness. They're burnt down, a flame burns, just like uh, in a desert wilderness. Nothing shall escape them. A lot of people say, well, I'm a Christian, so it won't happen to me. It's coming upon the whole earth. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run. Verse 5. With a noise like chariots, over mountaintops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them are people writhe in pain. All faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb upon the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. Notice here he's talking about people that climb a wall. They don't go by the normal paths. They don't go by the ancient paths. That would be the ways of God. They come over walls and they get in any way they can. All faces are drained of color. This is going to be a very frightening thing that will happen. Verse 8. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. So they are supernatural. They can't be cut down. They march in their own column and they die between the methods, but they're not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. And of course, we know that we are the houses. They enter at the windows like a thief. Uh, they all come in a window. We have ears to hear and eyes to see. And those are our windows. So this evil will come in. We will hear it or we will see it. And that's how they will come into men. The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? We're coming down to a war between good and evil, and it's going to be very hard to endure it. This is speaking of what will come in the last days before judgment. It speaks of an army of demons marching in ranks and charging on horses. They run on walls and come in windows. They dodge weapons and aren't cut down because they are supernatural. These last days are always described as dark and the sun and moon won't shine. In the last days the church will be raptured and the Holy Spirit will leave that held back evil for millennia. They will be uh, let loose because the Holy Spirit is not holding them back anymore. Demons will be running rampant when God comes to judge the earth. The Chaldeans were the ones that stole from Job. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, Job 117. When he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Abraham was born in Chaldea, and God called him out of there. The nation of Israel were birthed outside of Chaldea. 
And then the Jews went back into Chaldea in bondage. Is this not a picture or a type and shadow of Christians? Come out of the sat satanic prince's world and come into the kingdom of God. Never go back. Don't backslide. Fight the demons of this world and take territory for the kingdom of God. We are more than conquerors with Christ. 1 Peter 5.8 Be sober and be vig vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We must remember Satan is always there and watching. He and his demons are studying you, waiting for their chance to attack you. They are circling you 24 hours every day, taking notes and making plans for their attack. Satan and his demons were with Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days, and they surrounded him while on the cross. Why can't we believe that demons even exist today is beyond me. Hardly anyone speaks about demons today, even from the pulpit. Putting your head in the ground won't protect you from the coming attack. It will come, and we must be prepared to overcome it. Jesus saw the bulls of Bashan circling his cross, uh, and he was seeing into the spirit world. Uh, Bashan uh, was an area in Chaldea, and the king of Bashan was Og, and he was the king of the giants. So therefore it puts a demonic overtone on the bulls of Bashan. Bashan was known for its bulls. And in Psalms it talks about how Jesus was saying while he was na nailed to the cross that he could see the, the bulls of Bashan circling him. Next time we'll look at the Assyrians and dogs in Scripture. We're going to find that the Assyrian is a type and shadow of the Antichrist. Thank you.